wanted to see how Charity's doing. If she woke up yet. You were already asleep when I came home last night. And I missed you this morning, so I didn't have a chance to tell you. Charity woke up last night. That's terrific, McGill. Why aren't you more excited? Charity doesn't remember me. She doesn't even know who I am. She doesn't recognize you? No. And that's not the worst part. When I told her who I was, she started screaming. What? It was awful, Teresa. She was hysterical. That's so weird. I don't know what to expect when she wakes up this time. Hey, by the way, Simone, where's your sister? Where else would Whitney be? She had tennis practice this morning. Okay, good. Then I can tell you what happened last night. My plan is working. Charity is scared stiff of Miguel. You think you have news? Mine is even bigger. How could it be? I talked to him, Kay. I talked to the boy of my dreams. Wake up, kid. Wake up. You can't sleep in the doorway. Come on. Let's go wake up. Come on. Wake up. Come on. Go away. Wake up, sleepyhead. Breakfast is served. Ethan, <laughs> I can't believe you did all this. <laughs> well, I didn't. The cook did. But I made sure she prepared all your favorites. Well, you are the sweetest nephew anyone could ever have. True, but I'm just using it as an excuse to find out where you were last night. Don't look so surprised. The maids know all and tell all. Downstairs rumor mill has it that you didn't drive by the main house to get to your cottage until the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> I do know all. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> Dare I ask what you were doing all night? It's not what you think. I was shooting baskets until 4 a.m. Wow, what a coincidence. I was playing horseshoes all night myself. <laughs> I'm serious, Ethan. I learned how to play basketball. Why? Because today, I am going to show Luis Lopez Fitzgerald what Sheridan Crane is made of. Of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high as breathe in, breathe out You keep me alive You are the fire burning inside of me You are my passion for life Charity get hysterical when she saw you, McGill. I don't know. Neither does Dr. Russell. You know, all I did was tell her my name, and she went nuts. Like she was scared of me or something. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. She must have gotten you mixed up with someone else. What other reason could there be for her reacting that way? I wish I knew. But why would Charity think I was someone else? Now, I understand she'd have some temporary memory loss. She survived a terrible fire. That would make anybody want to forget. But that doesn't explain why she started screaming when, when I told her my name. I mean, we've never even had an argument. All either one of us ever wanted to do was be with each other. And you're sure you didn't say anything else that might have upset her? Nothing. It's weird, Teresa. I bet. Well, like you said, McGill, Charity's been through so much. She needs time to recover. Dr. Russell said that, too. Well, then listen to her. Whitney's mother is the best doctor around. Try to be patient. It's hard. You really care about her, don't you? I've never cared about any girl like this before. I just want to be with her all the time. I understand. But, but don't worry. You'll see. Things will work out. 
I just wish she knew I, I only want what's best for her. If she wakes up this morning and acts like she hates me, I don't know if I could take that again. You mean that cute guy you pointed out to me last night at the police benefit? That's the one. Simone, I am so proud of you. You actually took my advice and went up and talked to him. Way to go. He's the boy of my dreams, Kay. I felt it the minute I saw him. <sighs> okay. What did it feel like? Well, the feeling started in my toes. Mm-hmm. What kind of feeling? Like a tingling. Then what? Then, it crawled up to my knees, and it leapfrogged right into the pit of my stomach. <sighs> what else? I couldn't take my eyes off him. It was like, like a rainbow was floating right through me. And then my ears started ringing, not a bad ringing. It was like bells. And since then, you can't think of anything else. You got it. No, girlfriend, you got it. That's the way it feels when you've met the guy you're meant to be with. It's like you're hooked, and there's nothing in the world more important than being with him. Nothing. I mean, not school, not homework, not clothes, not makeup, not even your own family. Well, maybe my family's more important. No, <laughs> you'll see. We barely even talk to each other, but it seemed like he made me feel things I've never felt before. Now you know how I feel about Miguel. I actually sold him my dad's favorite leather jacket for five bucks. Dad was so mad, but it was so worth it. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. You want two eggs or three, TC? Two, sweetheart. Sweetheart, um, have you seen my brown leather jacket? What brown leather jacket? You know, my favorite brown leather jacket. I thought I would start wearing it again. You know, it's perfect this time of the year. Only if I could find it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't know where it is, would you? No, I really couldn't say. You know, I thought you might know since you went through all the closets looking for donations for the policeman's benefit. Hmm. How do you want poached or sunny side up? Poached. Sleeves are a little short, but I figured that the tailor could fix that. That's true. But I don't know why you want to wear that old thing anyway, honey. I mean, your new jacket is much warmer and frankly fits you better. Yeah, but that brown leather jacket has so many memories. It's like an old friend. Oh, I love that jacket. It's funny how you get so attached to something that you never want to let it go. There'll never be a brown leather jacket like that one. TC, I have something to confess. <laughs> What's so funny? Had you going, didn't I? Don't tell me. <laughs> yes, my gullible wife. I know that you gave my brown leather jacket away for charity. You just wanted to see me squirm. And did you ever? It was almost worth me losing my jacket. <laughs> so you're not mad at me then? Of course not. You know, the story has a happy ending. Simone sold my jacket for $5 to some young kid who only had a t-shirt on. Can you believe that in this cold weather? So, what's Dream Boy's name? Where does he live? I don't know. All I know is he's out there somewhere. And if it's the last thing I do, I am gonna find him. We better get some breakfast or we're gonna be late for school. What did this boy that Simone sold the jacket to look like? Ooh, some kid. African American, same age as the kids. I've never seen him before. Grace, who's that boy over there with Simone? I've never seen him before. Morning, Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell. Morning, kid. Simone, I'd like to have a word with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the way my mom talks when she's mad. What did I do, Mom? I told you that I didn't want you to have anything to do with that boy. I want an explanation, and I want it now. Arrested. How you gonna arrest me? Oh no, don't tell me you're a cop. Yeah, I'm a cop. Oh man. Hey, 
what you, what you, what you doing? I don't know who you are or where you're from, but here in the town of Harmony, it's against the law to start a fight with the police officer. Man, I wasn't trying to start no fight. I was sleeping. Somebody shoved me, so I shoved them back. I mean, I didn't know you was a cop. Well, now you know. What's your name? I ask you a question. What's your name? Chad. Chad Harris. Well, Mr. Harris, you don't have to worry about where you're going to sleep tonight. The Harmony PD's got a real good deal on three hots and a cop. Oh, come on, give me a break, man. I told you what happened. And I told you what's gonna happen. What's with you? What, what you like arresting people or what? You know, every once in a while, it comes in handy to be a crane. I made a few phone calls, and I managed to get Robert Ory of the LA Lakers to come here and teach me the basics of the game. You gotta be kidding. Mm-mm. Oh, and he was great, too. He taught me how to shoot, guard, rebound, you know, things like that. I still don't understand wh why. Because Harmony's version of Super Cop beat the stuffing out of me in a game of one-on-one -on -one yesterday at the youth center. Luis. Yes. He really showed me up. He made me feel like such a fool. Well, then why did you play him? I mean, have you ever even been on a basketball court before? No. Then did you really expect to beat him? No, but I mean, he didn't have to humiliate me in front of everyone. I know there's bad blood between you and Luis because you crashed in his police car. I understand that. I don't care much for the guy either. But what's this obsession of yours to get back at him? It's not an obsession. I just want to prove a point. Whatever happened to, I just want to serve my hundred hours of community service and never see him again. That still goes. I mean, once I get through with my sentence, I'll, I'll never see Luis after that. But in the meantime, I have got to put an end to his insufferable arrogance. I mean, you should see how he struts around like he's king of the walk. And that means hiring a basketball star to teach you the game? Hey, whatever it takes. Luis thinks that the world revolves around him. Well, I'm here to teach him that it doesn't. I'm waiting, Simone. Um, didn't Dad tell you? I only talked to that guy because he was cold and he needed a jacket. All he had on was that t-shirt. That is no reason to disobey me. Well, Dad's old jacket fit him perfectly. He just got here from L.A. and he didn't have a jacket. And it was cold out last night. If I hadn't sold him that jacket, you'd be treating him for pneumonia in your clinic today, Mom. Well, it was chilly last night. And he's the nicest guy, Mom. He looks like a street kid, and I don't want you hanging around kids like that. I can't believe you're against him because he doesn't have any money. That's not it. It's just... You don't know anything about him. But you always taught me and Whitney not to prejudge people. Uh, Simone, I think we better get moving. I fixed your girl's breakfast. Uh, we can just have some toast. Ooh, I forgot my biology book. We'll be right back down. Sweetheart, don't you think you were a little hard on Simone? She disobeyed me, TC. She just talked to the boy. I asked her not to. Our girls are getting to an age where they're very vulnerable. Yes. And it's up to us to keep an eye on them and know who their friends are. Sweetheart, I won't argue with you on that. But our daughter's not flighty like most of the girls their age. Well, it's not that I don't trust them. It's just that the world can be a very harsh place. And I want to protect our girls, and I want to keep them safe for as long as I can. Yeah. And you know my dream is? For both of our daughters to be as perfect as you. I'm not perfect, TC. Oh, yes, you are. You know, I bet you're the only teenager that never gave their parents any problems. You know. You probably never even jaywalked. Sweetheart, I'm just joking. I don't think we have any problems to worry about with Simone. I think we've seen the last of that guy. Well, I sure hope so. I wouldn't have gone off on you if I knew you was a cop. Would he go around slugging everyone who touches you? I was sleeping. 
Well, how do I know you wasn't some guy rifling my pocket for my wallet? Well, you ever heard of looking first? There ain't no time for that where I come from. So where I come from, you swing first and you ask questions later. Did you grow up a war zone? <laughs> you could call it that. Only it was just a good old U.S. of A. Sometimes you know what you was gonna be looking at when you wake, wake up in the morning. So you had to be ready for anything. It's 24-7. Even when you was sleeping. Otherwise, you might not wake up at all. That sounds rough. Look, let's just get this over with, okay? It's not like it's the first time I've been locked up. Forget about Luis. Pretend you never met him. Oh, look who's talking. The same guy who's obsessed with making Teresa pay for stalking him. Oh, not anymore. It turns out I was wrong about her. She was never stalking me. They were just accidents. You're sure? Yes. And I was this close to having Teresa wrongfully arrested and put in jail. It's a good thing you found out in time. But if I was wrong about Teresa, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe you and I are wrong about Teresa's brother, Luis. You're right. I don't believe you're saying this. I still don't like him, but there are two sides to every story. Maybe you should give the guy a chance. How do you give a chance to someone with an ego the size of Texas? There's only one way to get through to Luis, and that's to beat him in his own game. Literally. Oh, you've already challenged him? Uh-huh. And he accepted because he thinks I'm going to be a pushover. Well, I can't wait to laugh in his face when I win. All I have to do is remember everything Robert Ori taught me. There. How do they look? Nice. Maybe if Charity sees flowers first thing when she wakes up, it'll put her in a better frame of mind. She won't be so upset. Right. And she'll ask where did all these beautiful flowers come from? And I'll say me. I brought them. <laughs> and she'll smile and say, Miguel. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. <sighs> I better go. I'll walk you out. Okay. It'll be all right. Yes. What about you, Teresa? I mean, I've been so caught up with charity, I haven't even asked what's going on. Oh, nothing much, unless you count Ethan identifying me as his stalker. Oh, no. Whitney and I were afraid of that. <sighs> it's okay, though. Ethan finally realized I never meant him any harm. That's great. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going back to work for Ivy Crane today, with no disguise and no worry that I'll be discovered and arrested. I have never felt so free in my entire life. My dream is coming true after all. Don't do it, Teresa. Don't go back to that house. Stay away from the cranes, Teresa. You're gonna be sorry if you don't. <laughs> you sound like Louise. I'm just worried about you, sis. Well, you don't need to be. I'm gonna be fine. Not if you go back to work in the crane mansion. But McGill I know. It's your dream job. But admit it. Your real dream, the real reason you want to work in the crane mansion, is Ethan. You can't tell me I'm wrong. You still have feelings for him. And if you're around him, you're gonna get hurt. You don't know that, Miguel. Charity and I have only known each other a little while. And last night, when she pushed me away, it tore me up inside. If you don't get over loving Ethan, you're gonna be crushed when he rejects you. But I am over him, McGill. I'm not going back to the mansion to see Ethan. I am going back for my great job with his mother. If you believe that, you're kidding yourself. Have you and Whitney been talking about this? Why? Did she say the same thing? Mama, too. Because we know you so well. You're a dreamer. A romantic. And you don't just get over being in love with someone you've loved your whole life. Even if I do still have some feelings for Ethan. I'm gonna keep them inside. I'm not the foolish teenager I was when I first went to work at the Cranes. I've learned a lot. I am tougher. Tough enough to survive a broken heart? That's not gonna happen, Miguel. Okay, I better go. <sighs> Promise you won't say a word about my job to Luis. <laughs> You'd go ballistic. Good luck. You too.
What'd you do to get yourself arrested the other times? All right, fine, don't tell me. I'll just look it up on the police computer. Fighting. Losing my temper. Stupid stuff. Maybe you were right. Maybe I shouldn't have woken you up the way I did. What you doing? Starting over. Name's Luis. Where are you staying, Chad? I don't know. I just got into town. You broke? <laughs> I'm cool. Why'd you spend last night in the doorway? It's cousin. Because I only got three dollars to my name. All right, man. I can help you out. Yo, I don't want your money. I will take handouts. Okay. You might consider checking out the youth center around the corner then. Or in the place when I'm off duty. I don't think so. Look, it's not a handout. It's a place where anyone can go. You know, if you get cold or hungry, or you just want to take a shower, you can stop by. No preaching. Got hot coffee, orange juice, and donuts, right? Cap food. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Have a nice day. You too, sweetie. Bye, Dr. Russell. Thanks for breakfast. Uh, two pieces of toast is not breakfast. Next time I'm going to insist that you girls sit down and have a proper meal. That'll be the day. Well, see you at school, Dad. Uh, that reminds me, girls, the high school gym is going to be refinished today. Oh, gee, does that mean there's no gym class today? No, that means we're going to have phys ed at the youth center this morning. Oh. Wait a minute. You know, you act like that around your phys ed teacher, I can give both of you an extra 25 push-ups. Oh. Dad, you wouldn't. I would. Dr. Russell, it's Miguel. I'm at the hospital. Miguel. So, has Charity woken up yet? I think she's about to. That's why I called. I'm not sure I should stay with her after what happened last night. I don't want her to wake up and see me and get upset again. I understand. I'll be right over. I gotta run, honey. Charity's waking up again. Okay. I gotta get over there. Okay, I heard that. I know you're concerned about how your cousin Charity is doing, but I have to wait until after school. But that's hours from now. I'm sorry, Kay. Your mom and dad would say the same thing. Now, I know that Miguel has permission to skip classes, but you don't. I know, Dad. Sweetheart, I'll walk you to your car. Careful going to school. You've got to cover for me in phys ed today. I mean, I have to get to the hospital. But why, Kate? What can you possibly do there? Well, I just want to see what happens when Charity wakes up. I mean, if she doesn't recognize Miguel or if she screams when she sees him, then I'll know I can make my move. Okay. It doesn't matter how she reacts to him. It's how he reacts to her, and he's still crazy about her. Well, that's all going to change. Well, I'm not going to argue with you this morning. I've got my own life to think about. That boy? Yes. I'm going to find out his name and where he lives and get to know him better. Good luck. If only I didn't have to go to the stupid youth center for gem in school today. I know what you mean. School can really get in the way of real life sometimes. That's okay. I can wait. Because it seems like I've had this feeling since last night that my whole life is finally beginning. And it's so scary, but mostly exciting. I know what you mean. It's like, once you've met the right person, nothing's ever going to be the same. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. Okay, that's good, girls. Get your things together and head back to school. Sweetheart? Where's Kay? Um... She decided to take swimming today instead, Dad. Oh, last minute decision, I guess, huh? Yeah, I guess. Sweetheart, are you okay? Sure, why? Well, you used to throw yourself into phys ed. Today you seem a little distracted. Oh, 
It's nothing, Dad. I'm just tired from working at the police benefit is all. All right, sugar bear. I'll see you later. You probably got better things to do than help me look for a jacket, so... Uh, no, I don't. I'd love to help you. If only I knew where to find him. What do you know? I thought I might take you up on your offer. Excellent. Kitchen's that way, locker room's over there. Welcome. Thanks. What are you doing here? You're not working till later. I'm not here to work, Luis. I thought I'd get here early so that we could get our basketball rematch out of the way. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot already. Oh, not at all. No, I just can't believe you want to put yourself through another major humiliation. Oh, I'll take my chances. Besides, I'm glad that I've got an audience. Oh, well, they're not here for long. They gotta go back to school. Oh, well, it's okay. Actually, though, it gives me an idea. I was wondering earlier what we should play for, and now I know. If I win, the girls of the youth center get equal time on the court with the boys. <laughs> Well, you're not gonna win, but it's a deal. And when you lose, <clears throat> excuse me, if you lose, you owe me dinner. Fine, restaurant of your choice. Yeah, no, wait a minute. You know, that's too easy. We'll have dinner, but you'll cook and I'll decide what we're having. Well, don't plan the menu just yet, because I'm not going to lose. <laughs> Well, welcome back, Teresa. Ethan, oh, thanks. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. I, I just wanted to tell you that I'm as delighted as my mother is that you changed your mind to come back to work. <sighs> so am I. Is something bothering you? Well... Hey, you can tell me. <laughs> I promise I won't tell anyone if you don't want me to. Oh, it's just that your mother left me these instructions for a dinner party she's having tonight. I heard something about that. Oh, and she wants me to pick out the, the china and crystal to go with the menu she's planned. Well, and the problem is? I've never done anything like that in my life. In other words, you need some help? Oh, it's my first day back at work, and I don't want to mess things up. Well, <laughs> I've never done it myself, but I seem to remember my mother's got binders around here somewhere, uh, itemizing all the family's various crystal, china, and silver. Oh, wow. Now all you have to do is pick which ones go with which. Okay. Mm, order some flower arrangements to set off the table setting, and you're on your way. Whew. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. I can't promise I'm the best teacher, but would you like me to stay and help you? Oh, thank you, Ethan. Yeah. Well, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> I came here as soon as I could, Miguel. Why aren't you in school, Kay? Well, I cut because I heard that Charity was waking up. You know, I wanted to be there for you and Charity. So what's happening? I'm not sure. Dr. Russell's checking her out now. I decided to wait out here. Then she hasn't seen you since she woke up? No. I'm waiting to hear if it's all right. I don't want her to see me and get upset again. But the waiting's killing me. I know what you mean. Why don't we go for a walk and come back later? It might make you feel better. There's no way I can leave now, Kay. But thanks for the offer. Charity couldn't have a better cousin. And I couldn't have a better friend. Now, Charity, tell me what you remember. I don't remember anything. Nothing at all. Well, do you remember any people? How about a boy named Miguel? Oh, sorry about that, but not bad if I do some so myself. Ha! That's more like it.
lucky shot. We'll see about that. I don't believe it. He's here. Hi. Oh, hi. So, uh, how's the jacket? It's, uh, it's great. It's... I'm glad you like it. Um, so what are you doing here? Not that it matters, I just wondered. I never got your name last night. Chad Harris. Chad, that's a really nice name. I'm Simone Russell. Uh, my dad's the coach at the high school, but you probably already knew that, right? Um, my mom's a doctor. <laughs> Must be nice. I don't believe I said that. No, no, it's okay. Look, I, I gotta hit the road anyway, so um, it's nice meeting you. Do I remember a boy named Miguel? That's right. Um, that guy who came to visit me? Yes, that's right. I never saw him before last night. I don't remember who he is or anything about him, but he scares me. still scared of me. I'm so sorry, Miguel. Why is this happening? I'm sorry, Miguel. I wish I could tell you why Charity isn't remembering people or why she's afraid of you. Will it ever change? Will I always have this effect on her? I can't answer that either. Not yet. What bothers me the most is that Charity was starting to remember the other day. Now she's back to square one. Does that mean she's getting worse? Not necessarily. It just means that she doesn't have a real hold on her memory yet. And that's the key to her recovery. When she starts to remember her life before the fire, especially her mother, then she'll start to remember everything, including you. I'm praying that happens soon. I'll be here for you whether that happens or not. You can count on that. That means a lot to me, Kay. For dessert, I'd use these plates, cups, and saucers, this dish to hold the chocolate mousse, and this plate for the tart to tongue. See, I knew it. You're a natural. Uh -huh. Anyone else would think you've been doing this for years. <sighs> I would have been lost without your help, Ethan. You know, somehow I doubt that. <laughs> so what about flowers? I don't have a clue. Well, I know my mother's very seasoned conscious, and she loves fall. Okay. What about mums? That's perfect. Rust-colored chrysanthemums. Yeah, they'll set off the wallpaper in the dining room. <laughs> and on the side table, a vase of oak leaves and bittersweet. She'll love it. Okay. You know, if my uh, lawn career ever goes belly up, you and I could go into the catering business together. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> well, if nothing else, it would come in handy. No. Oh, now I'll be able to help uh, Gwen plan all the parties, pick out the right gifts to register for, all things you have to deal with when you're getting married. Married? <laughs> You're, you're marrying Gwen. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. You mean for a girl? I mean for anybody, it was a compliment. Sure, Louise. What's the score? We're tied, 15 all. You're kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? No, I guess you don't. All right, let's get down to business. You're leaving already? I thought you just got to Harmony. Well, I never should have left L.A. to come in in the first place. You must have come for a reason. Well, I, I had this crazy idea that um, my family might have had some kind of connection to this town once. It was a long shot anyway. Maybe it wasn't. What do you mean? Maybe your family does 
have something to do with this town. I could help you find out. Why would you want to do that? Why not? I even know how we could do it. You know, I mean, this baby in the game's mine. Well, how sweet it is. I won, you lost. How sweet it is. I guess that'll teach you to never underestimate a woman ever again. Especially one named Crane. It's definite then you're... You're marrying Gwen. Well, who else would I marry? <laughs> Teresa, is something wrong? Of course. What's wrong with me? You'd be so insensitive. I know why you're crying. If only there was some way I could jog Charity's memory. Oh, I don't think that's such a good idea, Miguel. I mean, it could backfire, right, Dr. Russell? Anything's possible. That would be awful, Miguel. I mean, it's just my opinion, but... Maybe you should stay away from Charity for a while, you know, and give her a little space, and then see what happens. But what if she never remembers me? You don't want to think like that, Miguel. Sooner or later, Charity is going to remember her mother since the two of them were so close. She loved her so much. And when she does, those memories are going to come flooding back, and she's going to start to remember other things, other people like you. I hope she never remembers her mother then.